I can now call myself the Tom Cruise of South Africa. <laughs> yes, because can. it is me hanging out of the helicopter. So <laughs> right, right, right. He, he's on the side of a plane, I'm on the side of the helicopter. I mean, which one is more dangerous? I, I don't know. But uh, yeah. My name is Tim Turan. Uh, I play the character of Tiger. And I'm also one of the producers of Heart Atlanta. Right. I'm Peter Butler. I play the role of Johnny Klein uh, in Heart of the Hunter. I am Dion Kutsir, and I play the part of Mike Bressler, the journalist in Heart of the Hunter. Amazing. Um, my first question is for Peter and Dion. How did you guys navigate a book adaptation, um, as you know, Heart of the Hunter, written by John Mayer, the book, and now being adapted into a, a film? And how did you navigate that process and ensuring that you know the essence of the character and the story remains true to the script and also bringing your own interpretation into the roles? Yes. Um, well, I mean, Heart of, Heart of the Hunter is one of Dion Mayer's uh, most acclaimed novels. Um, he's probably one of our more famous uh, writers, admired the world over. Uh, this a uh, movie, Heart of the Hunter, is based on his novel, The Heart of the Hunter. Is that correct? Right? Yes. Um, so it doesn't strictly adhere to to his words. It's an adaptation, which gives us as actors, you know, a bit of levity, a bit of uh, 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 wiggle room, you know, to bring uh, our interpretation to the characters. Some of the characters' names were even changed, you know, from the uh, book, from the novel to to the movie. So, so for my part, um, I felt I had relative freedom, you know, to make choices that were not necessarily what the writer had originally intended, but that serves our narrative. Um, so, you know, with that in mind, it made it a little easier for me to navigate uh, my character, my motivations, and, you know, what, what, dr what dr drives me or drove me as Johnny Klein. I had a very good director. Uh, he put me on the right path very easily and very quickly. And um, I had some idea about the journalistic life um, and how to navigate through that. So that was my cornerstone, really. But I would say, first and foremost, a very good director. Yeah. Um, so. <clears throat> I loved, you know, the action sequences that you were part of. But I'm curious to know how much physical training did your character have to do for this role? Yeah, uh, quite a quite a quite a lot. Um, there was the the just the physical training in terms of getting your body ready for 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 the film. Um, but then also Bonko and I had quite extensive stunt training with our stunt team working on the the, the fight sequences, the action sequences. So yeah, there was there was a lot that went into it, um, and a lot of it was built around not so much the aesthetic uh, in terms of what the character looked like, although that was part of it, because the character needs to look like the aggression and violence that he's threatening is actually something that's possible. But it was uh, uh, really aimed at making sure that our bodies can actually do what the stunt team wanted us to do. So uh, yeah, we had quite an extensive training regime and, and process in, in pre-production. Yeah, and yeah. in terms of, I love that car chase scene um, during the, 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 the chase of uh, Johnny Klein, which is also one of my favorite characters. I mean, Johnny Klein, I, I, I love Johnny Klein, and I think he executed that role well. Oh, wow, thank you. Um, yeah, but I, wanted, I, I want you guys to, like, you know, give us more background info or of how, you know, the, the, the blocking and the preparation of that car chase scene went, because it was really well executed. I mean, like, as an audience, I was like, this is tops, like it's, you know, it's giving extraction vibes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's just, when you're working with Netflix, the great thing is that you have a budget available to be able to really execute these sequences. Um, because getting that sequence done meant that uh, roads had to be blocked off. You had to get stunt drivers in to drive all of the cars. Um, when Johnny uh, goes through the intersection with his Mini, um, all of those other cars are also driven by stunt drivers, and it's timed perfectly by the stunt team. This is when he's going to be driving by. This is when you're going to have the, the screech of tires. And for that to happen, you need time. 
Um, and that's the great thing with Heart of the Hunter. We really had the time to really execute those, those action sequences, put the training in, uh, in terms of the driving shots, in terms of the fight sequences, take the time to make sure we get what we want, we get what we need to really up the scale and, and intensity of the film. Yeah. Mm. And there's so many elements uh, to, to that scene. And it was filmed over you know, such an extended period of time. The aerial photography, the inside the car, the, the, the stunt guys. I did very little driving myself, you know, it's the smoke and mirrors of, of, of movies. Um, but when I saw it, I was as blown away as you, as you say. Well, I was utterly blown away. I thought to myself, wow, we're getting it right. We, we're getting it right. You know, uh, we, we, we South African films have always been very good, you know, dramatically and acting wise, etc. And, and, you know, narratives and stories. But the one, the one area that I always felt that we needed to improve was, was action. You know, the Skitskop and Dorna element of films. And we're getting that right now, which, which we didn't necessarily in the past. And that I found very exciting about, you know, working on, on Heart of the Hunter, on uh, uh, Dion Mayer's book. Um, and we, we're all very excited about the, the uh, 30, uh, what is it, the 29th of 29th March, March uh, yeah, when, yeah, when, yeah. when everybody will have an opportunity to, you know, share in the, the beauty yeah. of, of, of that uh, achievement. Yeah, but I can now call myself the Tom Cruise of South Africa <laughs> yes, because can. it is me hanging out of the helicopter. So <laughs> right, right, right. He, he's on the side of a plane, I'm on the side of the helicopter. I mean, which one is more dangerous? I, I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's so, uh, that, wasn't, that wasn't a stunt, that was you. That was me, yeah, because the, the cameras these days are so good that you can't put a stunt person in there because it's part of the performance. Yeah. Um, and I need to be actually performing. And uh, as we're shooting there, the camera is, even though it's down there on the ground, it's in a close up on me. So I was in a harness and I had a stunt guy with me in the helicopter pushing me out because I was, I was on a spot that I felt comfortable with. And he just pushed me further out to make sure that it looks, that it looks good. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Dion. <laughs> There's a line that I'm actually quoting from what you said. You said, arts and culture is where political careers go to die. Like, please, can you just elaborate? Because I was like, <laughs> what? It's like, is that a thing? Uh, am I going to step on some toes here? I think that, well, I know that um, that means that, in, especially in South Africa, the um, ministers of arts and cultures are the guys that uh, that are on their way out and that aren't very important so they they view the arts and culture of South Africa as um, lesser that's what that line means okay no thanks for that clarification because I had a chuckle I was like what is this kind yeah. of thing it's a very um, interesting yeah. line thank you for picking up on that yeah. Now, and can you just magnify it? Yeah. <laughs> no, and in terms of you guys' shooting schedule, um, you know, when you guys got that schedule, what days did you guys have circled in terms of, like, I can't wait to film this day? Like, if it's day 10 of shooting, like, I'm so tired, so I can't wait for this day. But, like, for each We'll just talk to Mr. Cruz about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, for me, it, for me, it was definitely the days that we are going to be shooting the, the action sequences uh, because there's... Um, I'm, I'm involved in about three fight sequences and then we had the helicopter whole chase scene. Um, and like Peter said, those are the things that we usually don't get the opportunity to do. Um, we've made some amazing films in South, Af in, in South Africa, but the extent to what we could really push these action sequences made them really exciting. So those were definitely the days that I had circled in, in the schedule. Which specific scene? Um, I think the one with, well, phew, there's two. There's two, I'll, I'll have to, the helicopter scene, because I just knew it was going to be a lot of fun. Um, and then the final fight that people will see between myself and Bonko. We knew that was going to be a big one. It has the rain, it's just cinematic, it's beautiful. So I think those were the two, uh, those were the two big ones for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why don't you just, you just kill him? Yeah. <laughs> Tiger, Tiger has a bit of an attitude and a bit of an ego problem. So yes, he did have the chance, but uh, but uh, he relished the opportunity to go into a brutal hand-to-hand -hand fight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then in terms of your okay, your guys' favorite place to shoot then? Well, um, 
Favourite place to shoot? Yeah, well, place and to and the scene I was most looking forward to was indeed the scene you cited, the, the car chase through the city streets of, of Cape Town. Uh, I got to do some of it, of the driving of the Mini Cooper, uh, some of it, you know, and but not all of it. I would have liked to have done more of it, you know. Uh, I was fantasizing about some of the stuff I was going to try to do, you know, the wheel spins and what are all these terminologies, I'm not in favor of them, you know, the spinners uh, culture. Um, and then the scene that culminates on the bridge, ends on the bridge. Um, that was very exciting on paper for me, and I, I, I was really looking forward to, you know, to uh, filming that, immortalizing it on film. Um, I would have liked to have been able to do more in the scene, you know, more of the driving. Um, um, but I think I've seen an edit of it, and I think it's it's pretty excellent, you know, what what uh, what Mandla did with it at the end of the day, and Tim, and you know, the folks who are responsible for the editing. I think they did a really super job. So, um, but it, but it, but you know, it, it, it's not an easy thing to orchestrate when you're shooting, you know, in a busy city. Uh, yeah. And your high-speed car chases, you've got to shut off close off roads, you can't have regular traffic, you've got to have, you know, everything's placed. Um, but but by, by far, that was for me the most exciting, the most exciting element, mm -hmm. and most look forward to. So, from a producing perspective, um, I feel like locations such as Joburg, Durban, Cape Town are frequently used, audiences are getting bored of it. I liked... I think you guys shot the Bonko's uh, bike scene in the crew, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but why, why aren't we using other locations? Is it a logistics issue? Yeah, it's, is it? yes. I mean, it's mostly a logistics and cost issue because um, that's where most of your crew are based. That's where you get most of your ac accommodation. But we did want to move the, broaden the scope of what people see. So you'll see a lot of Cape Town in the, in the show. But I think you'll also see a lot of Cape Town that you haven't seen um, in other shows and other, other movies and in a different way. But it was important for us to really focus on the part where Bonkers character Zuko really gets out. Um, and you'll see the way that Mandala shot it. When we're in Cape Town, everything feels a little bit compressed and you can feel the pressure of the situation. And then the moment uh, 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 Zuko gets on his bike and gets out of the city, everything opens up and the, and, the, and, the, and the scope of it opens up. So I think that was for us an important element to really take the movie to a different part of South Africa that people might not have seen that much, especially uh, in South Africa and internationally. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, awesome. Guys, you're amazing. Uh, congratulations on Heart of the Hunter. And yeah, I hope, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe even a sequel. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah well, there's, there's at least, there's <laughs> ideas for at least three sequels and spin offs already. So, uh, yeah, here's hoping we can do, we can do some more of this. Yeah. Awesome. But in the meantime, keep your, keep your eyes peeled. 29th. Of March, it's going to yes. be a major event. Something like 190 countries. Yeah, this movie yeah, yeah. Will be streamed to uh, on the net and Netflix uh, platform, and I think it's going to be a major event and something that we as South African filmmakers, actors, citizens can be really proud of. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.